Well, as you can see, we've got this big behemoth J200. Um, I did go over it with my 10 inch straight edge and when I first went over it the neck was in a back bow. I need to take a second to explain the function of the two-way truss rod because not everybody gets it. Um, it's a relatively new thing. I mean they've been around for a while now but uh, when the guitar came in the strings were had been taken off the neck was going in a back bow so I backed off the truss rod. One thing you need to understand about the two-way truss rod initially it works just like a regular truss rod you tighten it so you turn it this way and it counteracts the pull of the string so the strings want to pull the neck up like a banana like this when you tighten the truss rod it pulls the neck back down so that's a normal single function truss rod that's the way it works now two-way truss rod that we have here when I took the strings off and release that string tension, the neck was going in a back bow. Now that's not that unusual. So I backed off the truss rod, took the tension off until there was no tension at all. Now what happens is with the two-way truss rod you reach what I refer to as a neutral zone where, the, where it's actually loose. But if you continue to turn counterclockwise, then what it does is it exerts the same type of force as the strings. So now the truss rod, when you go through that neutral zone, you keep going counterclockwise, it actually pulls the neck up just like the strings do. So in the case of this particular guitar, this particular neck, I reached the neutral zone, no strings on, it was still going in a slight back bow. It's very important to understand this because you don't want to go anywhere near this guitar until you get that neck as straight as humanly possible. So I continued through that neutral zone, turning counterclockwise, and then exerted that sort of negative force and tension the neck so that it actually came up. We got rid of that back bow. So I'm just at the point now where I'm checking that and with that tension on there that neck is pretty darn good there are a couple of minute little high spots that we will hit but that made a huge difference now what's going to happen when the whole job is done we put the strings on this is getting a compensated cantilevered bridge saddle as well as a compensated nut when the whole job is completed and we exert that string tension string force you know 160 pounds whatever it is I, we may be going with uh, either EJ16 Diderios which is 12 to 53 or EJ26 which is 11 to 52 one or the other we'll, we'll see as we get on the home stretch but once that string force is exerted this will probably be adjusted again because the combination of this truss rod the way it's set right now it's sort of forcing the neck up to straighten it out like I just mentioned earlier so when the string tension is added, another 160 pounds approximately, that will probably pull up too much so we'll end up loosening that off. So you, you, you got to play with that truss rod. It's a different story once the string tension is on the neck. So just wanted to explain that before I go any further. The other thing that is very important, you don't want to go anywhere near these frets with a file, a leveling file, until that neck is adjusted as straight as possible. And that's what we've got right now. With my larger straight edge, the 10 inch, it seems to be really good all the way along. No real nasty stuff. So I'm going to go to a shorter straight edge. So just check my shorter straight edge still looking pretty good I don't know if this was uh, CNC'd with one of those uh, CNC machines fret dressing machines or not pretty darn good see that was not the case when the guitar showed up it was basically unplayable that's why the guy showed up at my door well I'm happy with the lay of the neck we are gonna do a very light fret dress and just there's a little bit edgy there along the outside edge. We're going to heat that nut and get that out first and then we'll go full length and I've done enough of these things in the last year so I know exactly how to shape the compensated cantilevered saddle for this particular uh, master build I think it's called. So let's get on with it.
we will mask off that soft plastic inlay Yeah, I can see a little bit of wear in there, and there was a couple of minute little high spots right up around here, but uh, we're just going to breeze over that super lightly, buff these frets out, and then get on with the compensated nut and compensated bridge saddle. Okay, so we got that neck nice and straight. Um, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to breeze over that super lightly with the, with the mill file. Yeah, there is very little resistance. Just a couple of spots up here that we need to use the crowning file, but other than that, this neck came out pretty straight. This, yeah, this is probably done with one of those CNC machines by a guy that actually knew what he was doing. Nice. Okay. Scrub block. I've got 32400, 600, and 1200 stacked on the scrub block. And I'm just going to grease over that first with the 320 to take out all traces of the. Uh, file marks. Just slip that around the block a little bit. Some more fresh sandpaper on that. Okay. There's our 400. Move the head around. Two pieces of 600. I'll bring you in for a closer look once I'm done. 600, 600. Well, we have just corrected all the minute little spots that were missed that first time around with the CNC machine. Muffin time. Frets are done. On to the compensated nut and the compensated bridge saddle. Now luckily enough we were able to just mask over the shadow mag pickup this time around. Uh, we'll just give this a quick wipe and uh, we'll get on to the nut and the saddle. Kind of wiping off the residue of the uh, compound, and you, know, you don't want to float the frets out here. Just wipe it on, wipe it off, dry it right up. Good. I'm going to show you. This is the finished cantilevered compensated bridge saddle. And this is our compensated nut. I obviously have to smooth it out and cut it back flush with the edge of the fingerboard. I've had this question asked a few times but I wanted to answer this specifically for Michael in uh, Cornerbrook and Rob in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Uh, so this one is now perfect as you saw a second ago, I just need to kind of smooth out that nut and bring it flush with the edge of the fingerboard and then we'll go through the tuning test and uh, you'll see just how accurate this guitar is. All of you guys that are doing this work, you know how quickly you go through this. This is the last look at that nut before I flush trim it. This gives you an idea how much I like to leave on the crown to have enough real estate to be able to get those strings lined up, string to string to string, the spacing, 
and to have plenty of material for cutting the values in. Here we go, a moment of truth, our last cross-sectional tuning check. Here's our A string. Here's our D string. And our third string. Second string. First string. And these are the values we ended up with, with the, with the 12 to 53 strings at concert pitch. And that is the final shot of the bridge. Let's go check it out. Actually, I haven't bothered plugging this thing in yet. We'll plug it in in the house. I've always found the best tuning check is to layer chords uh, over top of one another, you know, across the entire span of the neck. So I've layered three progressions, uh, this time with the looper. So here's the first sort of strummed progression. And then the next progression is sort of plucked. And then the last progression is a series of, of uh, diatonic six. So this is all in, in E major. So I'm going to let that play and I'll just kind of fumble around over top.
Thank you. 